Why does the Russian Orthodox Church still use the Julian calendar? We hear this question in the Russian mass media as each new year approaches when the journalists traditionally speak about Catholic Christmas on December 25th and the Orthodox one on January, on January 7th. Some years ago, a Russian woman who lives in Germany said to me, calendar is not simply a question of my Orthodox identity. How should I explain to my son why other Orthodox children in his class, for example, Greek, Bulgarian, Romanian, also celebrate Christmas December 25th, uh, and we must wait another two weeks? Is, is the Russian church really so retrograde that the question of the calendar has not yet been brought up? In my paper, I would like to offer a brief historical approach to the problem and show the most important aspects of the present situation, in my opinion, because I am not the official representative of the Russian Orthodox Church in this conference. Discussion about calendar reform in Russia has a long and complicated history. As far back as 1830, the Russian Imperial Academy of Science made the first proposal to introduce the Gregorian calendar in Russia, but this idea was rejected by Emperor Nikolai I. The question arose again on the eve of the 20th century when a special commission on calendar reform was created under the Russian Astronomical Society in 1899. The basis for this was increase in difference between Julian and Gregorian calendars from 12 to 13 days in uh, 1900. The calendar question became extremely acute for the Russian church on January 24th 18, uh, 1918, when the Soviet Council of People's Commissars prescribed to introduce the Gregorian calendar in Russia uh, in this year. The Council of the Russian Orthodox Church 1917-1918 was therefore forced to include the issue of a possible calendar reform in its ag agenda. A project of the Council Act on the calendar question was prepared after careful consideration of different arguments pro and contra. They are well known, so I won't analyze them in my paper. Remarkably, one of the main arguments against the new style was uh, pan-Orthodox unity. Uh, I quote, it would be very joyful if Christians of different confessions will at least have unity for the feast days. But all the Orthodox churches count their, their ecclesiastical uh, cycle, uh, cycle according to the old style. Therefore, adoption of the new style in the Russian church would signify, signify in, some, in some respect the break with other Orthodox churches. The question of the style changing should be a subject of common di discussion and decision of all the Orthodox churches. End of quotation. A special commission was organized for for further elaboration of this question. Uh, question. Patriarch Tikhon of Moscow, in his letter to Patriarch uh, German of Constantinople in 1919, uh, asked for help to gather the official opinions of the whole Orthodox Church on this problem. Uh, Patriarch Tikhon received no answer to his letter, maybe because of the communication problems of those uh, turbulent years, and that is why he made no further steps to promote the calendar reform. But a number of other inner problems arose soon. In June 1923, uh, the meeting of the schismatic renovationist movement in Russian Abnavlenchestvo, also the living church, Zhivaya Tserkev, of clergy and laity introduced the new style. Patriarch Tikhon also issued, uh, issued the official decree about adopting the new calendar on the 1st October 1923. End of quotation. Most probably the Patriarch introduced the new calendar under the pressure of the state power, as it follows from his letter uh, in 1924 to the All-Russian Central Executive Committee. But the attempt of the renovation, uh, renovationist uh, movement to carry out the calendar reform was also not, was also not, accepted, not accepted by their parishioners. And the churches were empty on the Gregorian, Gregorian days of the ecclesiastical feasts. The Moscow consultation of 1948 
uh, 48 uh, just maintained the status quo of the calendar reform carried out in some Orthodox churches when it stated A. Obligatory celebration of Easter according to Julian calendar and Alexandrian Easter tables. Unity in the day of the main Christian feast. B. Possibility for all uh, autocephalous churches to use its own calendar uh, le legitimate diversity. C. Duty for the clergy and laity to follow the calendar of the church they live in. Respect for the local tradition. The participation of the Russian Orthodox Church in the preparation of the Pan-Orthodox Council resulted not only in a number of important publications on the calendar problem, but also in the decision of the Holy Synod uh, of 1967 that allowed, it, uh, that allowed it some European parishes of the Moscow Patriarchate to celebrate unmovable feasts and, uh, and the Easter cycle according to the new style. But at the same time, the Russian Church repeatedly insisted that the new Julian calendar uh, should not be obligatory for all uh, Orthodox churches. In Russia itself, the issue of calendar reform played no special role. Therefore, also the ecumenical appeals for calendar unity, for example, the Aleppo meeting uh, of the World Council of Churches in, uh, in 1997, uh, had, no had no practical consequences and was even not noticed. As the Russian church got its freedom in the 1990s, the calendar question arose again, but already there was a strong opposition of fundamentalist neophyte circles to any discussion about calendar reform. Thus, uh, we can see from these uh, historical moments that the Russian church authorities always approached to the calendar question with great caution. This can help us to understand better the main contemporary Russian pastoral aspects of the problem. Uh, the first aspect is risk of schism. The initiative of calendar, calendar change came not from inside, but from outside the Russian church, and position of the church was primarily not active, but reactive to the changing circumstances. The calendar reform carried out by Patriarch Tikhon gave no lasting results, and there have been no further attempts uh, at the highest church level. Obviously, one of the main fears was it is a possible schism. The Russian church had a tragic and bitter experience with the liturgical reform in the 17th century, which resulted in the old ritualist schism that is not healed till now. Those rapid and ill-prepared changes clearly showed that not only laity, but also a considerable, uh, considerable part of clergy made no distinction between dogmatic substance and ritual expression of the Orthodox faith. Calling themselves old believers is very significant. Regrettably, the current situation uh, in Russia is not, is not much better. An unprepared calendar reform uh, will lead to a church schism. In this case, we have to deal with ambivalent unity that poses a very difficult dilemma. The high desideratum is pan-Orthodox and pan-Christian, unity in the celebration of the most important liturgical feasts. But the concrete unity of the local church is put in peril in, this, in the case of reform. The experience of some other Orthodox churches that have changed the calendar resu resulted in old style schism, and this uh, evidently prevents the hierarchy from making new steps promptly. Obviously, the decision about the common orthodox calendar can be only pan orthodox and conciliar. But do we really have nowadays the working mechanisms of realization of such decisions? on the local church level that guarantee the reception by all believers. If the reform will not be mature, its, its fruits could be very bitter. Uh, the second aspect, space for dialogue. Gregorian and New, New Julian calendars were often perceived as an attempt of westernization of the Russian church or as the implanting it in it of alien elements. Introduction, the new style in 1923, 
occurred during one of the most difficult periods of Russian church history, under atheistic state pressure and in the fight against the living church movement. This fact has given for a long time strong negative connotations to the idea of calendar reform. During the Soviet, uh, Soviet times, the non-government Julian calendar uh, was for some extent uh, for many believers an important element of self-identity and even a uh, silent opposition to the regime. Many of neophytes who came in the church during the 90s count the contemporary liturgical tradition of the Russian church and the Julian calendar as a part of it as the Orthodox church tradition. Uh, this, their comfort zone, is uh, supposedly attacked by the foreign enemy forces. Therefore, the calendar problem should be included in the broader context of a possibility of liturgical reform in general and its practical forms. Unfortunately, there is no real, uh, real culture of dialogue in Russia now on this important subject. Small but very active and often uh, anonymous uh, in cyberspace groups easily label as renovationists, ecumenists, philo-Catholics, those bishops, priests, and theologians who just try to begin the church discussion on these questions. Education. It is obvious that there is not sufficient reception of theological reflection on the calendar problem in the church life on the grassroots level. Solid research uh, on the subjects is available, but interesting only for a limited circle of specialists. Much more popular for the broad masses of believers are brochures or websites that often deliberately provide erroneous information and widespread myths about the calendar use issues. The situation is uh, complicated by the, by the fact that in the 90s, Hundreds of priests were ordained in Russia without any theological education. They and their parishioners are the main consumers of such informational product and also spread it out as opinion leaders. Thus, one of the main pastoral problems of the calendar reform consists in the pastors, priests themselves. Uh, the next aspect, uh, already mentioned uh, by uh, Pierre Solodup, uh, problem uh, 2100. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russian church will face the practical effect of such situation at least in the year uh, 2100, that will be a leap year in the Julian calendar and common according to the Gregorian. The difference between calendars will reach 14 days and all feasts will shift for one day. The Gregorian Christmas date will be January uh, 8th, but till that time there will be already three or four generations of believers in Russia whose parents and parish priests sincerely taught them that the Orthodox Christmas is one day earlier. Uh, it will be not easy for the church hierarchy to explain that if one is faithful to the Julian calendar, such a shift is inevitable. To tradition will conflict and it is difficult to estimate the possible impact. Fortunately, uh, there was no such a shift in uh, the year 2000. Therefore, the calendar, calendar question in Russia nowadays is a part of a broader unsolved problem complex and the successful uh, partial, pa partial solution is hardly possible. The worst of probable ways is a quick and unprepared authoritarian calendar reform a la 17th century that will bring much more problems than the existing ones. From the church history we see uh, that for a long time there existed different me methods of easter calculation that not disturbed the church unity. An excellent example is the common Eucharist of bishops Polycarp of Smyrma and Aniket of Rome who celebrated in the second uh, century the Easter on the different days, but felt themselves joined in the risen Christ. Such approach doesn't mean suppression of the existing problems, but on the contrary, a new impulse to the ongoing reflection on the calendar question in Russia as well as in the community of the Orthodox churches. It is not enough to keep the tradition. We should understand and creatively adopt it. 
Only in this case, it will be not the date letter of the law, but will become a living tradition that organically enriches the life of the church. Thank you very much for your attention.